how might this unique resource be put into good use of the current state of Sri Lanka is very important. So there, this uh, gentleman, Dr. Yannick Van Doreen, he's an engineer in agriculture and biotechnology and has more than 15 years of experience and know how about the applications of the electroculture and the influence of the electromagnetism on plant growth and development, water and soil fertility. So I Google because I went through this, all these uh, research papers. I found this gentleman and I request through the email to respond to me. Today, he is going to give very important lecture and practically how you can build up this concept in Sri Lanka. So I'm not going to waste your time. And meantime, I would like to mention uh, this session is streaming on YouTube as well. So if anyone who want to participate, you can inform them uh, and send them this link as well. So Dr. Yanix, I would like to hand over to you. So th thank you, Harisha, Harsha. Um, do you hear me? Everything okay? Yes. <laughs> so uh, thank okay. you to all for listening. Thank you to invite me uh, to do this presentation. And I hope it will be very interesting for all of us um, to uh, just uh, to discover already new techniques that maybe you don't know about, um, about electroculture. So it's a whole new world uh, of applications for agriculture that can be very interesting in your country and uh, in, in, in every country in reality. So, so thank you for inviting me. So I will begin the presentation about electroculture. So for this, a moment, sorry, uh, yeah. So what is electroculture? Um, I will coming to that is mainly the use of electricity and magnetism to help plant growth and soil fertility. Um, so I will show you. So you have, you see my two internet sites. I have many internet sites, but uh, those are my main two. It's in French, but you can with Google Translate easily uh, learn a lot and read a lot. Uh, maybe in future there will be one in your language. Mm. Oh, sorry. So I'm Yannick van Doorn uh, from uh, 1976. I, I'm engineer in agriculture and biotechnology. Um, I have my own company, Symphony on the SRL and I became with time with the, with the years with my passion for for the for the subject I became like a world expert on electroculture applications about everything around the influence of magnetism and electricity on plant growth and so I developed a whole set of applications uh, that are really very interesting in agriculture that can make uh, that can replace all uh, uh, ch chemical uh, fertilizers and pesticides. Um, I'm also working on a book that will be like a manual. It's almost ready. In a few months, it, it will come out uh, about uh, uh, a whole set of techniques of, of electroculture. Oh, right. So what is an electroculture? You see on planet Earth, we live in a huge magnetic field and all plants need that magnetic field, even the animals, even we. If we don't live in that magnetic field, then we become sick and we deteriorate very quickly. Uh, the whole evolution on Earth lived, uh, a, a grew up in that magnetic field and this is very important for health and uh, and growing, we will see that. 
But that's not only a magnetic field. We have also uh, an electrical field between the sky and the, and, the, and the soil. We have a huge electrical field of around 100 to 300,000 volts. Uh, this, uh, this corresponds with uh, around uh, 100 volt for each meter high. You see, it's really a huge electrical field. Um, that where we live in and a magnetic field and and those electrical and magnetic field changes over the places on earth and um, those fields are also very important to carry like uh, waves like uh, atmospheric uh, radio waves uh, that are naturally produced by uh, thunder storms and uh, and sun activity sun spot activity things like that and those are all very important for the healthy growing of plants. And so we will see how we can use it, uh, uh, to improve plant growth and how we can use that in agriculture, how we can uh, uh, use the beneficial effects of it. And uh, Harsha uh, uh, talked already a little bit about it uh, with uh, uh, certain monuments we find back Ah, there's some somebody writing on it. Um, there, there are monuments uh, uh, that use in reality those magnetic and electrical fields and amplify it locally, where the plants grow a lot better around. But uh, not many people know about that. But it's just about knowledge, wisdom. So. Oh, there is somebody is playing with the. I don't know how it it happened. <laughs> uh, what's happening here? Yeah, sorry. So scientific research. There is a lot of scientific research um, uh, in the world about a lot, like for example here you see. Uh, an article, an extract, magnetic uh, effects on plant growth. Uh, so ma magnetic field effects on plant growth development and evolution. So and so you have like more than 900 scientific articles that you can find in, in science about uh, the, the magnetic effects on plant growth. And, uh, and you have also so many articles about the electrical field effects on plant growth and seeds, uh, seed germination. So it's something that is known in science, but uh, for the moment, it is not really used in agriculture because uh, people don't know it, but uh, we, we just have to uh, uh, use it and you will see huge results. So the, the knowledge is also known since centuries ago. There are already books uh, talking about that like uh, two, three centuries ago. I have a lot many, I have many books about, uh, I found many books in, in, uh, in, in uh, libraries all, all over the world about that. There are a lot in France, Russia, uh, probably in India too, for sure, in, in China too, everywhere in, in the world in, where there are big libraries and big agriculture uh, knowledge, we, we can find those information. So, uh, so. so, for example, you have that book, uh, it's a recent book, The Magnetic Pulse of Life, and there you will find more than 200 pages of science references about the geomagnetic effects on terrestrial life. So just to, to show you how many science articles there, 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 there is about the subject and, uh, and uh, almost, uh, uh, it's only a few people know about that. Hmm. So the electroculture applications. So I will show you a few electroculture applications, uh, but there are many, many more. You have, for example, the, the paramagnetic energy round tower is that tower you see on, on the right, for example, uh, that you can build in gardens, but also in fields, in large fields, large fields. Um, you have also the atmospheric electric antenna. It's uh, like a huge pole with uh, wires on top of it. Uh, uh, 
and 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 this is uh, also very useful to collect uh, electrical atmospheric energy and to uh, and to uh, communicate it to the soil and increase soil fertility like this this can you you will see it's also very uh, useful uh, with huge effects on plant growth very easy to install uh, there is also the cylindrical magnetic antenna uh, that you will see that can increase local magnetic fields and um, and also increase plant growth and you have uh, other techniques like uh, energizing or uh, uh, electrifying irrigation water and spray water or magnetizing it and this helps also a lot uh, the growing process you have also uh, uh, uh monuments or also uh, uh systems like uh, antennas like in the form of a pyramid that can electromagnetically charge paramagnetic volcanic rock uh, dust or or sand and also and then uh, you can transform uh, uh, a simple rock dust or sand in in a, in 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 a, in a fertilizer in a real fertilizer but a fertilizer that works by transmitting that electrical charge or that electromagnetic energy uh, to the soil that helps plant growth. That's an example uh, among others. So here you see, uh, so first we will talk about the paramagnet and energy round tower. Uh, this is inspired from the round towers we find all over Ireland in Europe. Uh, you you see there uh, round towers that uh, can that have a lot of similarities with uh, what you find in India, like uh, the stupa, the dagaba that Harsh, Harsha was telling about. Uh, there are a lot of similarities with the angle of the cone you see on top and things like that, and also the rocks and uh, maybe also the use of metals inside because you you will find a lot of iron in that kind of tower. And um, and uh, it was discovered in the 40s by by uh, uh, Phil Callahan. Uh, it's an, uh, a researcher of radio waves. He discovered that those towers act like uh, like antennas and transmitters of uh, um, low frequency radio waves of the of the atmosphere of the, of the Earth. And uh, now, uh, today, we call them also the Schumann waves. And it was discovered that when those, those, um, uh, those natural uh, uh, radio waves uh, are amplified locally, that all plants grow a lot better. And so then we, we, we began to make uh, little towers uh, to, to, to copy this and make uh, little towers like you see in my garden or like uh, you see on that rock uh, below on bottom. Um, you can make this little or big and, uh, and then you will see and, and put in the fields and it's made of certain rocks inside uh, that make it uh, working. And also the hat with a special cone and angle, and also made of certain rocks. And then it acts like that antenna, and uh, and all plants will grow a lot better all around. It's really working very well, very easy to install uh, anywhere in the world because those electromagnetic uh, low frequency radio waves are very useful all over the world all plants and animals need also humans need those beneficial waves to to grow healthy and to stay healthy for example for, for, from where come those uh, radio waves so they come from thunder strikes every time you have uh, thunder in the world somewhere uh, it, it generates those uh, low frequency radio waves that will travel all over the world and it's continuously we it's like a heartbeat of planet earth and, um, and so you have scientific articles that are talking about that you, you see uh, for example that schematic with the frequencies like 7.83 hertz 14.1 20.3 so that that's all uh, uh, the Schumann waves and those low frequency earth waves that are collected by those towers. An example you see here on, uh, on the bottom uh, below 
uh, a little experiment everybody can uh, easily uh, try. It's uh, a little tower in, uh, in a pot with uh, uh, radishes. And you see on the left that the radishes uh, grew a lot bigger than at the right, where the radishes uh, are still very little. Hmm. So it's very easy to, to test uh, when it works very well, you see that. And what are the effects or what can we, um, um, uh, um, what, what, what can we gain from those towers? So an example, it can increase the yields by 30 to 100%, sometimes it doubles, sometimes it's only a few 10%, but uh, it can really increase the yield uh, dramatically. So increased resistance to stress, cold, heat, dry or wet conditions. So it's like the plants become more resistant to all the stress of the weather or extreme weather. And, and so that today it's uh, important because of uh, uh, when we speak about uh, climate change or, or problems in the climate uh, 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 that uh, create a lot of problems in agriculture uh, in Europe, probably also in your country, I don't know, but uh, it can help uh, very much the plant to resist. Um, also, the plant become more uh, resistant to pests and diseases in, 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 in general. So when they stay healthy, you need less pesticides uh, to treat uh, those pests and diseases. And when you use uh, a lot of electroculture techniques all together, then you, you will discover, you will observe that you have almost no pest on disease anymore. Um, now, you have to see that in each country too, huh? but it's, it's a general. general. Um, also, what is very, very interesting is that you have more nutrient content. The plants are growing bigger, better, more healthy, but they have also more nutrient content, like 30 to 50% more. And in comparison with chemical uh, fertilizers, with chemical fertilizers, in most cases, uh, the nutrient content is, uh, is, uh, is less. And, and with uh, electroculture techniques, uh, it's more. So it's only good for health and, and well being of all the people that will feed uh, with those uh, very nutritious. Uh, uh, vegetables and plants. An example how to do, uh, you have, for example, here, um, uh, an example, in, it was in a field of a, of a vegetable grower, and you see a vegetable that is called uh, kohlrabi in, in, uh, in, uh, in Germany. And uh, you see in my hand on the on the right, it's a little kohlrabi and on the left, a big one. So the big one was all the kohlrabis that it, it corresponds with the size of the kohlrabis that were in a radius of 60 meters all around the tower that was around one meter 50 high. The size of the little kohlrabi was the kohlrabis that were uh, planted uh, that were are grown um, uh, further away of 60 meters. So th this gives you an idea that just a little tower like this with, uh, with the clay tubing uh, uh, have a huge effects on plant growth. Hmm. Another example, it's uh, of, 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 uh, of good friends and friends that have, um, that, that like to use those round towers, and they have uh, already three years in a row, they have the record of uh, uh, the, uh, the, the French record of the biggest um, sunflower uh, in France. Uh, it's uh, from Richard Ambert in the Vendée in France. He, he has huge, huge results in his garden with all those techniques. And you have also Mehdi Dao, it's a vegetable grower, and he has the record of the biggest uh, pumpkin in France uh, last year. So it's also with uh, the use of those towers and also other electroculture techniques. So you see, uh, and, and that all without any uh, chemical fertilizer or pesticides, yeah. it's only yeah. organic uh, growing techniques and uh, electroculture with it. Um, thank you.
So if somebody is sound is on, uh, please deactivate your sound, uh, the microphone. So uh, it's, it's for better sound for everybody. So how to do? Uh, a moment. I check. Oh, sorry. So here you see um, how to do. So you have uh, two drawings of uh, uh, towers. Um, it's just a clay tube or a ceramic tube. It's even a, a lot better a ceramic tube. Uh, so it's made out of clay, yeah. And um, and then we put inside we put uh, paramagnetic rock. So paramagnetic rocks are rocks that are uh, sensitive to the magnetic field of the Earth, and uh, so that can be measured with devices. And we just uh, fill them completely with that rock, and that makes then that kind of antenna effect. Um, so you can put like uh, one to three towers for one hectare is sufficient to treat a whole hectare of land. So uh, it can be, it's very interesting. What is also very interesting is that you just need to put it one time and then it's every year it will work. It's not like a fertilizer that we have to bury every year or make again every year. No, with those round towers, you just put it one time and you will see all over the years, the plants will grow always better. So it's uh, uh, in comparison than without. So a tower radiates around 10 to 40 times its high height. So uh, the higher you make the tower, the biggest will be the area that will be treated. But you can also put a lot of little towers. It's more easy to make. And uh, you can also, like this, uh, cover huge areas. Another example with paramagnetic rock, what you can do. So paramagnetic rocks comes uh, usually from uh, old volcanoes. So mines uh, that are in old volcanoes, uh, it's uh, the rock, uh, the, the mostly gray in most cases that you find in the center of the volcano. And um, here, for example, you see beans in on the bottom, on the on the right bottom, you see the beans that have uh, get the paramagnetic rock, and uh, on the on the left, the beans that uh, didn't. You have rows of beans each time. Uh, on the top, on the right, you see also uh, two rows of of carrots uh, with the paramagnetic rock, and uh, and uh, at the left without. You have to know that that kind of fertilizer, but it's not a real fertilizer uh, in the way that you don't use it. Uh, it, it doesn't consume itself. It's, uh, it will stay in the earth with the, its good effects. If you put it one time on the soil, you will have each year those, those effects. Huh? It can really, uh, it stays um, in the soil if you, if you, um, if you use it uh, in the good way, and uh, and so it's it's very interesting because it will always increase the fertility of your earth. The the more you will put, um, uh, with a certain limit of uh, of course, but uh, uh, the the more you will put, the more you will have uh, good results. It will increase the fertility, the life, the microorganism in the earth too. So it's it's very good. Mm. The, this is a device uh, that is called the PCSM, invented by Phil Callahan, and uh, now I make it also um, because it was not made anymore in the world. But now I make it, I make a new version that is even more precise. But uh, th this makes it able. You have also laboratory devices that are even more expensive. But but this is a version for farmers, for example, or for uh, advisors. And um, 
And uh, this makes it uh, possible to test the different paramagnetic rock that can come from mines and volcanoes and to choose the best one to uh, improve the soils. Another technique is the atmospheric antenna. So an atmospheric antenna is like, um, uh, uh, yes, it's like uh, those uh, big poles that, uh, or like those antennas you can find on buildings too, to protect the building uh, from, uh, from thunder strikes or from storms. Well, uh, when you put those uh, big poles with wires uh, in the field, you will see that uh, it will collect atmospheric electricity and it will help to the plants growing all around uh, in the field. Uh, with like, for example, three to five poles like this, you can uh, treat a whole hectare of land and increase dramatically the, the, the growing uh, process of the plants. Uh, this was already known in 1783. Uh, there are books uh, like Electricity for the Plants from Abbe Bertolon. Um, uh, it's a very interesting book, uh, but you have also the research of uh, uh, Professor Ola, director of the Agricultural Institute of, of Beauvais in France in 1893, with a lot of uh, information, research, uh, tests, uh, experiments they did with those kind of uh, atmospheric antennas. And improved over the years, they developed uh, um, uh, uh, always better and better atmospheric antennas to uh, increase plant growth. So you have my versions, uh, for example, but you can also use a very simple one with just uh, pieces of wire, uh, uh, but you have also more sophisticated ones. For example, here below on the left, you see uh, corn. Uh, you have one corn uh, here that was the control uh, plot. And at the right, you have two corn, uh, two corn ears from uh, the plants in the treated field so you it 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 had it had doubled the yield of the corn in in that field with those antennas that uh, was an example there was also a research uh, uh, in a in a french university of pharmacology uh, from with uh, martin Carrel in uh, 84 and um, she observed that the dry weight of the plant, like a mint, had 20% more dry weight. So the plants were bigger, but also more dense. And, uh, and, and for example, on Datura, they, she had 30% more uh, dry weight. And the essential oil content was also a lot more. And this gives the idea of the nutritious, nutritious content, the nutrient content in the plants. And on mint, it was 27% more, and on datura, 57% more. So it's really a huge difference. It's not only uh, two, three, or five percent, it's uh, more than 20% more uh, essential oil content. Here we have uh, Justin uh, Christophe Lowe. Um, so Justin Christophe Lowe is really a, a major inventor, pioneer in those electroculture techniques. For, for me, he, he, he would have got the, the, uh, a Nobel Prize for agriculture if, <laughs> if I have to decide it, because he is really a major inventor and he, he showed all the possibilities you could do and he, he, he really dramatically increased the yields uh, at, at a lot of places all over the world with his techniques. Uh, he was known uh, to, uh, to Australia, New Zealand, uh, uh, China, uh, um, Germany, France, and that uh, it was before World War II. It was not in the years of internet like today. Uh, it was really, uh, he had huge results. And the title of his book is interesting because on, on that old moment, uh, he, he, he wrote it, suppression of all nitrates, so uh, the chemical fertilizers and other chemical fertilizers. So he, he, he is convinced that with those techniques, he can suppress, he can, uh, um, he can replace all uh, chemical fertilizers. So it's very, very interesting. 
And this was already proven in the 20s, 30s, 40s, you see. Uh, you see me uh, on the picture in my garden with the flower that is normally never as high, but here with an antenna that was close uh, to me, uh, that uh, flower of, of Lupin, uh, named Lupin in, in France, uh, was like uh, uh, 1 meter 70 high and 1 meter 40 width. It was really very big. This is also a plant that is uh, used uh, to produce um, a grains with a high protein content in Germany. Um, so Justin Christoflo, you see him on the picture with giant leek. Uh, with his techniques, you see also a picture with the tree and a, a big pole of six meters, 25 high. He show how to use it to, uh, to fertilize a tree. Um, you see also a schematic on the field with the north south because those techniques are there are certain techniques uh, are um, interesting to install uh, in the direction of the earth magnetic field because uh, they act like collectors and amplificators of the earth magnetic field and then we put like wires north south in the field for example and connect them all together to one or more antennas For example, how to do the most e the most simple version would be to put just um, uh, an iron pole, um, uh, like it can be an iron pole uh, for from construction, for example, uh, in the soil, like an iron pole of three, four meters high or even more. And then we put at the end on top uh, little pieces of wire, of iron wire or galvanized steel wire or even copper wires. Uh, it has to be a metal, but you can use uh, almost any metal. Um, and, um, and then you put that just as simple as that in the soil, uh, away from uh, big trees because uh, nothing has to be uh, bigger than the pole uh, close by, otherwise the tree will collect the energy in place of the pole. Um, you can also use a wooden pole and put a wire uh, along the pole uh, from, uh, uh, the, from the atmosphere to the soil, to the earth, and you will see all plants will grow a lot better. Uh, the highest the higher you make the antenna, the the bigger will be the area that will you will um, that you will energize in a certain way. Huh? So, if you want to treat a whole hectare, for example, uh, one hundred meters on one hundred meters square, then you will use like three to five antennas. The more you use, the better it will be. Um, it can help also to prevent hail if you uh, if if you have that in your country. I don't think so, but uh, I don't know. But in in Europe, uh, there are more and more hail storms, and and uh, this can also help to prevent hail because uh, it will collect the atmospheric electricity. And hail storms comes when uh, there's too much electricity in the clouds, uh, uh, and then when it discharges, it makes a very big uh, hail, uh, hail um, uh, balls. Huh? Another technique, it's uh, energizing water. Uh, I will go very rapidly over it, but you can... Um, uh, uh, it's really a very simple technique also used in nature. When you have a storm uh, with thunder strikes, you have a lot of electricity in the air. The water is different than at the normal uh, rain and uh, the plants grow a lot better. And so uh, this gives the idea to electrify the water and, and this helps really a lot uh, the uh, fertilization. An example, you see me with um, uh, uh, close to a plant that I given uh, energized water and uh, at my left you have the similar plant uh, without energized water. You see a huge difference. You can do that in wall fields too. I have farmers uh, in my uh, customers that uh, use that too. And you have also even in the book of 
of L'Abbé Bertolon, you have that uh, picture of 1783, uh, uh, where you see somebody uh, spraying electrified water on a tree. Because uh, so you see that they know that already from uh, uh, two centuries ago. Another technique is the uh, cylindrical magnetic antenna. And so here you see, um, so that is something I invented uh, uh, personally, uh, uh, inspired by all the old techniques before me. Huh? Uh, I uh, improved it a little bit. And you see, um, uh, it's just a, a row of magnets uh, that I uh, put, uh, uh, that I improved. Uh, with beeswax and and uh, and a circuit also, and, um, and this is connected to a uh, galvanized steel wire, and that you can put on top of the soil or you can put it in the soil. It's even better in the soil, and um, and so you 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 put the, the magnet oriented with the compass with the earth magnetic field. This is very important; otherwise, it will not work. It has to be in resonance with the earth magnetic field. It acts like a collector, like uh, you have a radio that, that collects the radio waves in a certain way uh, that captures it. Uh, you have here uh, like a natural uh, radio for the earth magnetic field. And then you see on top the image uh, in, in my garden, it was a little test I did, but I did it already now also in very big fields with farmers. You see on on the left, the, the potatoes and eggplant uh, that grow a lot bigger, uh, they are growing uh, with that uh, antenna uh, inside the soil. And at the right, you see the same potato plants and eggplants a lot uh, less, uh, 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 more little, uh, because they don't uh, benefit of that uh, magnetic energy. You see, then you have just to put, you can do by hand, you can make uh, like trenches like this uh, in the soil and put the wire, or you can also do it with a machine. Now I've developed also machines for agriculture to uh, put uh, wires in the soil to, to uh, transmit and fertilize uh, the earth. An example that was in a big field of three hectares of, uh, of, of a farmer in north of Germany, and you see parsnip. Parsnip, it's, it's a plant that is uh, quite difficult to grow at huge scale. And uh, you see on the left a lot more um, uh, vegetation of parsnip uh, uh, on the field with, uh, with uh, a cylindrical um, magnetic antenna. And on the right, less. And, and when he measured the nutrient content, uh, he had 23% more essential oil in the parsnip. So that gives you an idea. It was the plants were a lot bigger. Uh, he had never had so much uh, yield than, than with uh, those uh, electroculture antennas. And but at a similar at the same time, the 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 quality was also a lot better. So maybe you ask yourself, ah, maybe it will work uh, uh, only in Europe, but here's an image of Brazil on bananas. And you see on the right, uh, on top, you see on the right a row of uh, big, big banana plants, uh, trees growing, and in the middle, the, the bananas are still little. The only difference, they were planted at the same time, it's that the row on the right is with a cylindrical magnetic antenna. So they grow like two times faster. And below you see the, uh, uh, the same, you see the, the picture below. In the middle, we have the, 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 the cylindrical antenna in the earth and on the sides not. And you see that the further away you go from the middle, the, the, the more uh, little are the banana trees because of that. Mm. So this is the place where they do it already. It's a huge uh, farm in uh, Brazil where they do it already since five years. Uh, also, 
I have different kind of magnetic antennas. Uh, so I show you two, two pictures there. Uh, also the carrots, the carrots you see on the right, also a big carrot and on the left, little carrots. So in the past at that farm, the carrots were always a little like this because of the soil. And when I put uh, the magnetic antennas, uh, they become really huge because magnetic fields are very important for good plant growth and fertility. Another example is on corn. Here they, they collect like 20 tons a hectare of corn in place in comparison with the control field that was seven to eight tons a hectare. That this was in Italy. Here, that was in France, uh, on cabbages. You see on top the cabbage field growing a lot faster than uh, below. Uh, and it was also with magnetic antennas. Here, this was a cabbage field in Germany. You see on the left, the two pictures on the left, you see uh, uh, that the, the color of the, of the cabbages, the leaves are not so green, uh, less green than on the right. On the right, this is the same soil. Yeah, you have to understand that we didn't change anything with the fertilizers. We just put electroculture with it. And you see that even with the same soil, the, the cabbages grow a lot better. They have they, they are full of nutrients, uh, very healthy plants. And on the left, you would think that uh, they, they lack of something uh, because of, of the, the color of the leaves. But no, it's just uh, because uh, on the right, uh, they, they are with, um, on the field with uh, cylindrical magnetic antennas. Also on wheat fields, you see a huge difference. You see the difference. It's also more than double yield. Huh? If you see the, the grains are a lot bigger and, and also more, uh, you see huge difference. So conclusion of all that, I would say, uh, I think you, 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 you understand it by yourself. Huh? You, you don't need to be very uh, intelligent to understand that, to see that that Electroculture have a really great potential for successful new agricultural policies. Uh, so uh, I think uh, uh, it's uh, it's really a huge potential. Uh, so uh, it's and and quite easy. So it's also easy and fast implementation. You see, it doesn't need high technology to to do that. You you just need the magnets, wires. Uh, 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 paramagnetic rocks. Uh, so with very simple solutions, we can we can improve dramatically agriculture. And I think in a country like Sri Lanka and like uh, a lot of countries that have difficulty in the world today, uh, even in France, uh, uh, those techniques can really help a lot the farm the farmers to to continue to grow uh, good products well and help a uh, healthy plants and uh, and uh, and and big uh, yields um uh, with less uh, uh, of the of the very expensive uh, fertilizers and so on and pesticides um so it give a big increase in yields and quality it's very sustainable because those techniques when it's like um uh, antennas, uh, once you have put it in, in the field, it will work every year. It, it doesn't uh, deteriorate or very slowly. So yeah, with one antenna, it will work like 10, 20, 30 years in a row without any, uh, without any maintenance or, or, or changing of pieces. Uh, so it will work very well. You, you don't need to buy every year consumables or fertilizers. You can, uh, uh, when it's installed, uh, it will work every year. Uh, also, a very big advantage, it's a uh, fast and easy learning for the farmers. Uh, uh, when, uh, they, when you show them how to do, they can do it very quickly by, by themselves. Uh, you, you don't need... Uh, uh, big schools uh, uh, or schooling uh, to to learn how to do, uh, but at the same at at the same time uh, there is a lot of wisdom and knowledge that we can discover and learn to improve all those techniques, and that's why 
I'm creating like a university of electroculture in France and Europe and uh, where uh, uh, everybody, uh, there are students coming from all over the world to learn those techniques to me uh, since already more than 10 years. So I'm, uh, I'm uh, organizing uh, every year a lot better the, 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 the courses. And, uh, and so we will uh, for sure also invent new techniques and we will improve all those techniques too with time. So it's more about wisdom uh, knowledge than about uh, uh, money and uh, high technology of, of uh, or, or technology that is expensive. No, uh, here you can do a lot of things, but you just have to know it how to do. So it's more about uh, with, with, with very less material. So it's more about uh, knowledge and wisdom. Um, so and it will also increase the food sovereignty of a country uh, and of a farmer so it's uh, only good uh, to to have that that uh, uh, the the food sovereignty increases uh, in a today world economy uh, because uh, we see what is happening in the world today uh, if we can increase food sovereignty it's only good for the people all around us so I would say thank you to all for listening. It was a very little introduction to, to show you the possibilities uh, uh, that are huge uh, with simple techniques and also to show you that there is already a lot of scientific material that we can uh, discover and study um, for, the, for the scientific and students among us. Uh, so you, you see, it's, uh, it's a new new a uh, whole new world of uh, opportunities that uh, uh, opens itself to to uh, to agriculture everywhere in the world so thank you very much to you and harsha and uh, i hope uh, it was a useful presentation for you thank you <laughs> so harsha i give you again the word Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yarik. It was very interesting and uh, 